to have to do that work every single time you need to calculate electric force is a really challenging thing. That's something that you do. It's a lot of menial work and it has to lead someone to ask the question, is there a better way? And electric field is that better way. So this is where we have derived an expression for the electric force. This is where we started wanting to find the electric force on this charge here. And we've come, up, uh, come to this expression here. This becomes tedious when you think of the prospect of someone asking a follow-up question or asking for a slightly different scenario where they are asking, uh, what if, we, if this charge, instead of being a charge Q, so in this question, this was presented as charge Q, what if we ch change the amount of the charge so that it's not charge lowercase Q, but charge capital Q or charge Q2? Then imagine <laughs> thinking through, imagine going through all this calculation all over again with a new charge. That's when you get what I mean by saying that's so tedious. That's manual work. I've already tackled anything that was interesting to tackle. I've made all the uh, considerations for the vector quantities of electric force. Do I have to go through all over again? And the machinery we introduce is, well, maybe we don't have to. You can look at the expression here. So when you look at all these terms here, I hope you notice that they have all a common factor. They have a common factor of Q not Q squared, but common factor of Q that corresponds to the charge here. That really comes all the way back from, um, all the way back from Coulomb's law, where one of these two charges was the charge that's feeling the force. So we can imagine factoring out all those uh, single factor of Q that corresponds to the charge that represent the charge that's filling the force. Once we factor it out as Q, then what's left inside here? All the quantities there, they only depend on these other charges and the geometric arrangement. Everything that's going to be inside this here that only depends on things other than the very charge that we place here. It depends on the arrangement of the other charges and, it, and the geometry matters, which point in space we are talking about that matters. So the collection of expression there that can be represented as some function that's a function of position. And this is what we call electric field. And when we have electric field specified, what I want you to take away there is that um, a lot of work has gone in to figure out that electric field. And, and that's why the, the expression that we introduced as part of last week for the relationship between electric force and electric field the reason this uh, relationship is so powerful is because whenever you are asked a force question, it allows you to get that force very simply from the electric field. If someone else has done all the hard work of figuring out the electric field and gave you the electric field, or vice versa, let's say you want to experimentally measure electric field, then you can do it from force measurement. So the beginning part of this is, um, well, is introducing electric fields defined by this equation that I've written a couple of times and you have seen as part of your work in week five. Now, just this uh, equation alone doesn't, I mean, it, it tells you how to convert, convert from electric force to electric field and it tells you how to uh, it, it, tells how it, it tells you how to do that. But beyond that, I think it doesn't provide a lot of intuitive handle um, on electric field. To the extent it does, it tells you to 
rely on your intuition for electric force. <laughs> so if you are, want to figure out the direction of electric field, imagine a positive test charge being someplace and whatever force that positive test charge would feel, that's the same direction that electric field should point in. And now I have both of the, some kind of instruction and the simulation there. All right, so, I mean, yeah, it says on check electric field. I mean, you know, you can, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to uncheck it. You can just uh, place the charge and move it around and see what that does. There's no harm in that. <laughs> no, I mean, um, the reason I had people uncheck electric field is it's uh, for the same reason that when you watch some movies and you have people in the movie who are speaking in, I don't know, French, and there's no subtitle. And when the movie makers do that, they have a reason for that. They want you to sympathize with the characters who don't speak French. And as the people around them speak French, they don't understand the thing. So, uh, so I want you to be able to sympathize with a real physical lab setup, where when you have some charges, um, you don't see electric fields. Electric fields are not something that become visible in the space that you have in front of you. Nonetheless, it is property of space itself. And the way we test those uh, properties of space is by placing sensors in space. And when we, and these sensors are what we call, what well, they are, these sensors are uh, sometimes what we call test charge it can be thought of as a very small amount of electric charge, positive electric charge that would be pushed in the direction of the electric field. So, um, so this is really the reason I tell you to turn off the electric field so that um, when you run this simulation with the electric fields on, you are really getting more information than you would in a real lab because in a real life lab, you don't literally see the electric field, but you know it's there, you understand that it's a property of space, and the way you know it is because you know if you place a test charge somewhere, the test charge would act according to the electric force which comes from the electric field. So, yeah, um, yeah, move the sensors around. Oh, one nanochrome charge, let me move. So, with the electric field turned off, if I have sensors around one nanocoulomb charge, you see that all these fields, they always and consistently point away from that positive charge. And if I go closer, it gets stronger. Um, by the way, I guess uh, when you are doing high voltage experiment, sometimes you can feel the electric field and uh, that's, uh, you can kind of feel your hair standing up on your arm or whatever. And you know, the way that happens is exactly how I was describing through the interaction with the test charge, as in the electric field causes uh, charges on your uh, hair to separate or whatever. So the hair gets pulled one way through that electric force and that's what you are feeling. Um, but the field itself, uh, yeah, anyways. So, well, that's uh, the kind of how you would uh, be able to measure the electric field. And this is the visual representation of what that looks like. And when you replace this with a negative uh, charge, you can, well, when they're right on top of each other, they canceled each other to zero. When you just replace it with a negative charge, then you see that all these electric field, fields, they go towards the negative charge. And that represents the, the attractive force that positive, charge, positive test charges would feel around this negative charge. And I, and I guess this is a good picture to illustrate the meaning of test charge. It's basically amount of charge so small that it has no effect on any other charge. You can see it here that these sensors, I'm telling you, you should imagine them like a positive charge. But when I remove this, then you know, there's no electric force anywhere, even though these sensors are like positive charges. And the reason is it, it, with, the, with the adjective test, what we are limiting this to is that 
it should be a very small amount of charge so that its force on other objects are negligible. That's really what it comes down to. So this is the uh, representation of the setup I have in the simulation on the other screen. And what I want to do here now is predict the direction of electric field based on what I know about electric force. So this is uh, what I can say about this setup here. So I think I say this in one of the lecture videos, which is that whenever you feel like you need a handle around how to deal with the electric field, your number one go-to resource is the, the relationship between electric force and field. That electric force is proportional to electric field. So if you have these test charges and you are trying to figure out what is the electric field at the location of these test charges, the first question you should ask is, imagine the test charge is positive, what would be the force? So let me do that in, um, do that one test charge at a time. For this test charge here, I can figure out the forces due to each of these um, source charges. So this positive source charge would produce a repulsive force that points that way. And this uh, negative charge would exert an attractive force that's along the line connecting the two towards it itself. Now, you should be a little bit careful about the magnitude. The magnitude here should be smaller than the magnitude from the closer positive charge because um, I hope you are remembering in the back of your mind Coulomb's law, which describes the interaction between two point charges as being inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So those are the individual contributions to the, uh, um, to the electric force which means by this factor of the test charge, they, these arrows, they can easily represent the electric forces or electric fields. Until you specify a scale with a particular unit, it's the same thing. So for the net electric field, which is always what we are talking about when we are talking about electric field at a location. So we are talking about the sum of all the electric fields it should appoint, let me do the head to tail method. So using the head to tail method about here is where the electric field should point to. That's a kind of, um, you know, mostly away from the positive charge, but the pull from the negative charge has a slight effect so that the electric field is pointing straight away from the positive charge. You can repeat this exercise for all the other test charges. So let me quickly do that. So here's the force due to the positive test charge, force due to the negative test, the negative source that's attractive. Now, one thing that's uh, interesting about this particular test charge is that it appears to be at the same distance from both of them, which means these two have the same magnitude. So when they add together, their vertical components will cancel out and you will only be left with the horizontal component that's double the horizontal component of one of them. So this is the net electric field. For the charge here, I can kind of see by eyeballing that electric field is gonna point in the generally the same direction, but stronger for really two reasons. One, this location is closer to the charges. And um, up here, some of those electric fields had to can cancel each other out. But here, nothing will be canceling anything. Positive charges pushing it away to the right, negative charges pulling it directly to the right. So uh, the, for the fields down here, I feel like I can do a bit of a, make a symmetry, like, do I? Well, for, for this, I can make a symmetry argument. I can imagine doing this. I can imagine taking a line between these two and take a mirror image. So I, everything up here gets mirrored down here. So when that happens, 
the it the mirroring thing should be mirroring the electric fields as well. So I should have past electric field from positive charge pointing that way, electric field from the negative charge pointing that way, and the sum, the net electric field should be pointing this way. And I hope it, if you go through it in detail, you will find that to be the case as well. Uh, I need a little more careful work with this last test charge. Um, I, yeah, I can't quite imagine rotating this whole setup in because once you do that, then I'm swapping the location of the positive and negative charge. Okay, that is not allowed. You are not allowed to change the physical setup. So let me just work through this one normally. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did up, up there with uh, this uh, test charge. So the negative source charge here should be exerting an attractive force along the line connecting the two. So here's the attractive force. And the positive uh, source charge should be exerting a force that's pointing away. That's a smaller magnitude than this inward one. So you look through it and um, uh, imagine adding these two together, then it points this way. That's the net electric field. Yeah, and this is definitely different from what you would have gotten if you simply rotated this around. So, so that's the uh, prediction for the electric field at each of these locations. Okay, so I have positive and negative charges. Let me place all the sensors uh, right in the middle between them. All right, that's the right direction. And uh, this looks kind of like a square. So I'm going to assume this is a square and place the second test charge directly above here, three blocks above. That where the, that's the one preserving the scale. So yeah, the pointing to the right. I guess a smaller magnitude than I would have guessed, but you know, I was drawing it qualitatively. And the magnitude there is the same as the magnitude here. And when I place the sensor here, um, it yeah, points roughly in the same direction that I drew. I mean, I might not have gotten the angle perfectly right, but it points mostly up a little bit to the right. That's the general feature we are going for. And finally, when I put the sensor here, it's uh, in the same direction, pointing a little bit to up, pointing upward and a little bit to the right. And yeah, that's the electric field. <laughs> um, and yeah, and uh, so whenever in a lab manual you see this, uh, that's uh, the place where I want you to discuss with the group what they have seen, make sure they didn't make any fundamental mistakes and um, everyone's ready to proceed. And what I want you to make sure here was that uh, people understood uh, how you calculate the net electric field and perhaps especially, because you know all these weird directions, they are all right. I don't know if I have any intuitive feel for that, but something that you can always get intuitive feel for are simple pictures like these, that you understand that at this point, electric field points directly to the right, not upward, not downward. And this um, has to do with a very specific geometry in which it is set up. That's why net electric field here simply points rightward. It doesn't point in any other, uh, it can't point in any other arbitrary direction. So, all right, so that's getting feel for the electric fields and superposition principle involving electric fields. So, now, and uh, when we enable electric field um, illustration, that illustration should verify what we are seeing here. So when I turn on the electric field, this is what you see. Now, the, you know, the simulation doesn't show electric field at every single point. I mean, as it is already, it's quite, um, quite a bit distracting. It, you know, it's, there's, um, I think it's called the vector field. If you're taking math 3C right now, you'll see it maybe in the last quarter of your class, I think, based on what I see in the textbook that's supposedly for math 3C level math. 
So this is called the vector field. I don't think you really necessarily need to know that. And, um, and actually these test charges can basically act as uh, each one of these points on the vector field. Now for the ones that I've placed, you can see that they, yeah, make sense. Around here is where electric fields are pointing directly to the right. Now it curves a little bit, both to the left of the midpoint and the right of the midpoint, but right at the midpoint, what you see is consistent with electric fields simply pointing to the right. Um, and the electric fields here and here seem to match their neighbors, as in it's mostly pointing up or and with a slight change in direction. So, so yeah, the, that's the electric fields. 